I will present my pictorial crafting stories, smart and electronic textile craftsmanship for interactive books. The pictorial introduces and contextualizes the making of an interactive e-textile book, annotates design decisions and pictures the making of the book. It reports on early explorations of users interacting with the crafted stories and closes with discussing the possibilities and perspectives of crafting tangible, embedded and embodied interactions within e-textile books. I present the book my grandmother might have made. The work was motivated by a textile book my late grandmother actually made in the early 1980s and gave to me when I was around 18 months old. You here see me as a child playing with the book my grandmother made. My grandmother had used her skills as a seamstress and craftsperson to fabricate an interactive textile book. Her embedding of snaps, buttons, zips and various other textile accessories allowed for attaching, opening, moving and rearranging, among others, bringing individual stories to life. Decades after the original book was made, I revisited this book from my perspective as a researcher and artist working at the intersection of traditional crafts and computational technologies. I made a book inspired in form, motifs, techniques, aesthetics and interactive stories by what she had crafted. In addition, I incorporated computational technologies and smart and electronic textiles to augment textile interactions she proposed with new visual effects, movements and sounds that can be activated either by the users, their play partners or their surroundings. Through this work, I intend to explore how a craft approach to interactive technologies can support tangible interactions and multisensory experiences of interactive and tactile books. You see here an overview of the 12 pages of the book, spanning the course of a year from the winter holiday season to the changing leaves on fall trees. The motifs by and large are the same as in the original book, as are the movable elements. But all pages feature additional smart and electronic interactions, such as light, sound, vibration, movement and color changes, among others. The pictorial pictures all pages, materials and augmented interactions, as well as the original pages for comparison. I will in the following focus on selected pages only to convey the general idea. Specific emphasis was put on the beauty of the textile electronic interactions and the interactive experience. Material interaction and electronic effect should relate to each other and provide children with a suitable, transparent scenario, as well as potentially open up a new layer of the story. My guiding motivation was to imagine a book my grandmother might have made, would she have had access to a knowledge of electronic textiles. Electronic and computational elements then should deepen, support or intensify the play and storytelling. However, they must never impose themselves on the user, distract from other details or merely prompt the activation of an effect without the interaction leading to this activation being aesthetically and contextually embedded. You see here four exemplary pages of the book. Page 1 is an example where the physical interaction is the same as in the original book, but augmented with electronics. The original version had a tree and candles and a golden star attachable via snaps. The new version also displays a tree. Candles are equally attachable via snaps, but additionally light up when the star, made out of golden metal thread, is placed on top, function as a switch closing the circuit. Another example are the pages showing a blossoming tree and a house. In the original book, the blossoms, again attached via snaps, could be collected and the windows and doors of the house opened. A figurine was standing in the doorway and flowers were behind the windows. In the new version, the blossoms, crochet and dyed with photochromic pigments, turn purple when in sunlight. When the door is opened, the figurine greets with a message previously recorded. The flowers in the window, screen printed with thermochromic pigments, change their colors when touched. While the interactions are the same as in the original book, the blossoms reacting to sunlight allow it to include environmental conditions to the narration. The recording could, for example, let two people asynchronously play with each other, leaving each other voice messages through the figurine. The page pictured on the bottom left is again quite similar, showing a person looking outside a window. The difference in the new version is the person blinks every few seconds. The page with the boat differs a bit to the original one. Instead of doves in the sky, here we can place the moon or the sun in clouds. While the moon shines, we see stars in the sky. When there is both sun and clouds, we see a rainbow. The last page shows again a very similar motif to the original book, but instead of collecting apples, here it is leaves that change their color and may fall off the tree. 
Having shown you a selection of pages and interactions they provide, I now want to briefly detail how the book was made. The base for all pages is a light blue cotton fabric stretched over cardboard, as shown in the big picture. I used felt in various colors and mixed pattern fabrics for sewn application. Many movable elements are crochet, as in the original book. Many textile elements of the book double as a sensor. For example, the cat's hair is a raya knot weave of wool and stainless steel blend, functioning as a pressure sensor, shown on the picture on top. Smart textile elements include fabrics and threads, screen printed or painted with thermochromic, hydrochromic or photochromic pigments, resulting in color changes, for example, with rising temperature, as in the example of the leaves changing color, or changing color with exposure to UV light, as for example in the page where the winter sky turns blue with sun, or the aforementioned blossoms of the tree, the winter sky being shown here on the bottom right. I used silverized copper thread to crochet the moon and gilded copper thread to make the lace star. In both cases, the material was chosen for visual appearance purposes as well as for its conductive properties to form a switch. I used metal snaps both to attach elements and as a conductor, as for example in the candles, and plastic snaps to realize two distinct points of contact on a snap when needed, as for example the case with the figurine. I used animal copper wire wound into a coil as an electromagnetic actuator, so when the coil is under power, the dot turns, resulting in the eye blinking. Digital input and output processing happen on an Arduino nano board, a motor shield and two greeting card modules. All processing units are mounted on cardboard at the back of the book and connect to the individual pages with textile cables and snaps to allow for flexibility and repair, as shown in the big picture. The book is powered with a LiPo battery and has an integrated charger. A switch at the back turns the electronics off, pictured on the right. So far, only limited settings allowed observing interactions with the book. I invited children to engage with it for an extended period of time and observed visitors at an exhibition the book was displayed at. Preliminary data about these experiences can briefly and anecdotally be reported here. We see here a brief video of children interacting with the book, a young girl and a boy of approximately eight years. They browse the pages of the book and the girl especially deeply explores the interactions with her full body, even mixing interactive elements from several pages. The setting of an exhibition further provided insights into how the book can be interacted with by more than one person at once. People did engage on two opposite pages, shared the experience of a single page, or discussed with each other what they could do next and then collaborated to do so. Closing, I briefly want to reflect back on crafting these stories. Previous explorations of interactive e-textile pages described the importance of the choice of characters and storylines. In the example presented here, these decisions were, for the most part, taken by my grandmother. She needs to be given credit for developing both stories that are brief and short in interaction, which is essential for young children, as well as the possibility of narration to play out across several pages for older ones. In my own making, the process of manually crafting each interaction forced the interaction concept to pass several lengthy stages, a slow and incremental process critical to the formulation of the actual interaction on a visual, haptic and activity level. Working with smart and electronic text has allowed to extend craft qualities also towards the computational and electronic interactions. And e-textile made possible a specifically seamless integration of form and function on a material level. The textile materiality and the familiar format of the book possibly also contributed to the intimate and at times embodied experiences we could observe. To me, the book that my grandmother might have made was a starting point into exploring potentials of e-textiles in the context of interactive books. It has been a personal journey, as well as one towards deepening insights into the role of e-textile craftsmanship can play among today's interactive technologies, especially in the context of children's play and interactive objects. In future work, I may aim to look at how proposed interactions and artifacts play out in real-life settings how to transfer insights into books for other audiences than children, how to explore the transferred forms of crafted interactions to other disciplines concerned with storytelling, as well as to connect their approach through a shared interest, and to reflect on aspects of sustainability and longevity in the context of electronic crafts. For now, I want to thank you and look forward to your questions and close with acknowledging my partners in making this book. Mm -hmm.